Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be walking through the very basic process of racing DWM. Now I've done a video before on adding color to SL status. I'll be doing that today too, but I wanted to kind of combine it into one little video that basically will take you through racing the bar of DWM, some of the other things in DWM, SL status, and maybe ST at the end. I don't know if whether or not I will get to ST or not. I don't usually use ST outside of being the terminal that I use for my scratch pads. So we'll see how it goes. So first thing we obviously want to do is find a color scheme. So that's whenever you're going to rice, you need to know what you're ricing to. So that's one of the rules that I have always had the hardest problems with because I'm not a uh, designer like at all. <laughs> not even a little bit. My color coordination is not fantastic. So I always have to find someone else's color scheme, you know, or find a color scheme generator or something. Because I look like one of those old golfers <laughs> out on the golf course. My color matching skills are not, you know, on point. Anyways, so I've done the legwork on finding a color scheme that I want to use. And it's this one here. Now, what I will say is if you're out there hunting for a color scheme, the best thing to search for is Vim color schemes because there are a ton of those out there and not even ones that are like uh, very popular. So like, you know, everyone's heard of Dracula and I'm using One Dark right now and there's Solarized and Nord and all these ones that are very popular if you go to r slash Unix porn. But there are other ones out there that are less popular but also obviously exist so this one here is called paper color it's by a uh, guy named um, yeah that guy <laughs> uh, I will link this in the video description I will also link a github repository that has a link to every single one of these that I found now I'm not saying it's all the Vim color schemes out there in the world but it was definitely several dozen of them so that can give you a good idea of basis of, or, or I guess or basis of what you want to uh, use for your color scheme. So I'm just, this is what it would look like in Vim. And what I like about this one is it actually has gone through and listed out the colors. Not all of them do that, or at least they don't do that with, within like the readme file. They Some some of them do it within the source code itself and you have to kind of dig for it. This one is going to be very easy. So what I'm going to do is move this over to my other monitor. So this is probably the last time you'll see the actual color scheme. I just want to be able to have it up, you know, all the time. So let's go ahead and go over to a terminal. Now, the first thing we're going to do is the borders and the bar. And by the borders and the bar, I mean the border that's around the active window and this bar up here. If this will not affect SL status at all. It will uh, we will mess around with the highlight color of the tags. So all of my uh, suckless stuff is in a dot config folder slash suckless. And in this case, it's going to be in the DWM folder within there. If we do an LS here, we will see, you know, we got config.h and all the usual DWM stuff. So what I'm going to do is remove config.h. That way I always make all my changes to this file here. And it's just that way you know you're making changes to the actual source code instead of the configuration file that's made after you do a make uh, command. So we're going to do that. And then I'm going to vim into config.def.h. Okay, so this is my DWM config file. And these are the colors that you're going to be wanting to deal with. And you can't really see those now that I've highlighted them, but basically the way DWM works is that you define color variables based on, I'm not sure if this means, I, I'm pretty sure this means color. I'm not sure why they've chosen gray as the default uh, variable name. It's just kind of weird, but whatever. So the one we want to change first is the scheme norm. Basically, that's going to be the background of the bar. So in this case, I have it set right now to color gray 3, which is this one here, which is white. 
So that's the foreground. So that's going to be the text color. Co color gray 1, which is this color up here, is going to be the blue. Okay, so the color I want to set this to right here is going to be 1C, 1C, 1C. So I'm going to change word 1C, 1C, 1C. Okay, so that will change this to almost black. Okay, now we want to change this color here, this red, which is going to be uh, EO767, EO6C75. So that'd be it's going to be the the cayenne, and that's uh, this right here. So that's that's the color of the selection. So we want to change this one here. Oops, to change word, and I'm going to make this um, AFD. 700 okay and then i'm going to write and save this so that's going to take care of this and it's going to take care of this it will also go through and take care of the border color so that's going to be that the afd 700 is going to be like a lime green so I, what i think i'm going to do is go ahead and log out and log back in so you can actually see that it worked but we're going to save and quit this and then you need to run a make command and then you need to sudo make install and enter your password and you got to make sure you enter your password right because obviously I don't obviously know how to type um, so anyways I'm gonna pause here and I'm gonna log out log back in so you can see the changes that we've made okay I'm back as you can see now I have a lovely green color up there and one thing I did off camera that I had to do was change the text color the, or the foreground color and I'm still not completely happy with it. I'm going to go ahead and make this Just downright black. I've kind of made it this gray color. That's part of the color scheme I'm not happy with it because it's still not completely legible So I'm going to go ahead and just make it black and see if that works And so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that now now the color that I need to change is the select foreground so it's color gray 4 which is this one here I'm going to change word and make this 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Actually, actually, what I'm going to make that is that same 1C, 1C, 1C. That way they're the same black. We'll change this. And actually, what I'm going to end up having to do is make sure I'm... Because I'm in the wrong file. So I'm actually going to have to remove config.h again and go change this in vim config.def.h. That way, it's changed everywhere. Okay, we'll just right click this one now. I'm not going to log out. I'm what I'm going to do now is go through and change the color's SL status. Now, I've already done this one time, and I'm telling you this because what I'm about to do can really bork your system if you make a typo. I made a typo. I change. I left out a character, and DWM just will not work if you mess up SL status. There's something about SL status or any of the things that mess around with the status bar that if they're not exactly right, DWM just stops working. I mean, it will load, but it, you won't be able to change workspaces. I ended up losing the video that I had recorded. It was a whole mess. So we're doing this again, and this time I'll make sure that I don't go through and make any mistakes. So. Let's go ahead. So my SL status is in dot. So is in the same suckless folder. So I'm just going to dot dot slash slash SL status, and we'll do an ls here, and I'm going to remove config.h. Okay, and then I'm going to vim into config.def.h, and this is the bottom of the file. So the top of the file looks like this. Bottom of the file looks like this. Now yours will look probably a little bit different because you'll have different modules, uh, but. For the most part, this is what yours will look like. Now, you do have to have a patch in order for this to work. The patch that uh, is called, I think it's called Status 2D. Don't quote me on that. I will leave a link to the actual patch just in case, just in the video description. And basically, what it allows you to do is have this code here, 
which you can't see if I highlight it, but this beginning code here, and that basically just defines the numbers. Oh, and you, you always have to make sure you use the syntax. This is where I messed up and why I'm having to record this. If you don't have these little air, um, upwards arrow things at the beginning end, if you miss one of those, you're borked, and it really will just bork you. So <laughs> just don't forget things. It's the easiest way to do it. So let me get my color scheme back up here. The interesting thing is I had colors here when I actually did get it to load that I really liked. So I'm going to have to try to recreate those. So the first one I had was color, was purple. So I'm going to copy that, control C, and back to tag four. And then change word and copy and paste. And then I'm going to deliberately make sure that I have the entire syntax here exactly correct, which I do. Okay, so the next one I want to do is the CPU percentage. So back to tag seven. Uh, and that one can be orange. All right, change word and control V. Control V, okay. And the next one is RAM percentage. And that could be pink. Okay, change word. All right. And disk percentage right now is white, so we're going to change that to something different here. That can be this uh, like teal color, I guess. All right. All right, and then the next one is my weather. I believe I had this in when I had it, had it working. I had it this blue color here. Oops. Make sure I'm doing the right one. Change word, and yep, okay, and then back to seven. The next one is updates, which we could use this like magenta color here, I guess. Oops, I keep going back to the wrong tab. I don't know what tag. I don't know why. All right, change word. All right, seven, and the next one is volume. We'll use that. We'll use white for that one. Okay. All right, and the last one is date time. So back to seven, we'll make that one green. All right, now, once again, make sure you ch check and make sure your syntax is correct. So carrot C and then pound sign in the number and then another carrot. Pound carrot, C, pound sign, another carrot. I'm just going to go through and make sure I have everything right here. Because I'm not doing this again. I just absolutely refuse to do this again. Okay. That looks right. Except for my volume does not have... Oh, it's because... Alright, so one thing looks weird here is the volume does not have an icon. That's because the volume icon is defined in the script itself. I don't know why I did that did it that way. It just seems to work fine. I mean, it doesn't really matter. All right, so I'm gonna write and save this, and then I'm going to make sudo make install. All right, that made that's just fine. Now I will point out that when I made that mistake before, when I missed one of those carrots, it still thoroughly built just fine. It showed no errors whatsoever. So just because your thing makes does not mean that you're not going to be boinked. So, or borked, boinked, whatever. Um, what, now, there is a way to test your SL status changes without logging out and logging back in. So you'll just do kill all SL status and then restart SL status. I am not going to do that way. I'm going to go ahead and log out and log back in mainly because that will allow me to save changes on my video and audio recording just in case I made a mistake again. You don't have to do it that way. If you make a mistake, shut your computer off, log back into a different environment, make your changes to where it's supposed to be, and you'll be fine. That's why you always want to make sure you have a secondary environment installed. Either that or you could always use a TTY, but a secondary environment, environment works better for me. So I'm going to log back out. 
log back in and you'll see the changes when we come back. Okay, so I'm back. As you can see, we have our new colors and they are striking. Now, I'm not quite happy with the way the file system one and the weather has worked out because they're kind of too similar. So I might change those up around a little bit in the future, but for now, they're fine. Now, I understand usually I have the weather and the updates up there. I have not made those scripts back working in, cron in a cron job yet. That's the reason why it says not available, but that uh, I don't think anybody really cares about that. So that's basically how you write DWM. Now, there, that just is the window manager itself. I'm going to go through and off camera and do my terminals. ST is a little wonky how you theme it, so I'm not going to bother doing that on camera, at least not right now. Maybe I'll go through and do that in a separate video, but for now, this is just, you know, where I'm going to stop, I think. I do want to find a wallpaper that kind of goes with this color scheme, but I will work on that as well later on. That is it for this video. Uh, if you have a Rice of DWM or even another window manager, I'd love to see it. Get, leave, a, leave a link to or something in the comments and I'd love to show it off because Ricing is fun. I, I'm not very good at it. I always steal it. Like I said, I always steal other people's color schemes, but it's always fun. That's why I make so many videos about Ricing. Uh, so leave it, you know, a link or something in your in a comment below, showing me your rice that, or your daily driver rice or whatever. And now, as I look at this, I'm still not quite happy with the foreground color of the selection. It, I, I set it to that black, and it's still not just not quite bold enough for me. It's still kind of hard to read. I'll figure that out. I, who knows how long I'll actually stay with this rice. It's kind of bright for me, but I wanted to change it and make a video. I need something other than one dark, even though the channel colors are going to stay one dark for a while. But anyways, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. You can support the channel by subscribing and hit the, hitting the notification icon bell or by going to pay, Patreon and supporting us via patreon.com slash linuxcast. And I would like to thank our producers, our patrons, Devon C. and Marcus B. I did make this graphic. Uh, I will do a better job of making it because I forgot the stuff at the bottom, but I guess it doesn't really matter. Anyways, thanks for this. And uh, if, thank you everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.